Hey, welcome back to Robot Cantina. After reading through some of the comments, it was clear that some of you folks really do pay attention to the details, and I received quite a few comments in an effort to help me resolve the problem. And many thanks for stepping up and trying to help. Unfortunately, the way I edited episode 21 leaves the impression that the problem can be solved with some easy tweaks. But that's not the case. Anyway, I decided to take a deep dive into why I set up the ignition system the way I did, and take a little bit more time explaining the problem. So let's go to it. Just for clarification, I'm just as lazy as most people, and if I do extra work, there's a reason for it. Also, if you haven't guessed by now, electronics is my specialty. The problem with using the wrong sensor in the flywheel is beyond a simple fix. Now, it may seem you can fix the problem by fiddling with op amps or transistors, but it isn't that simple. And like I said, I'm lazy, and if I take extra steps to resolve a problem, then there might be something to it. Now, I'm going to go ahead and play some excerpts from episode 21 so we can analyze the problem. Hopefully this will give some clarity to the solution. Let's go ahead and do a walkthrough on how the ignition timing is done with the fuel injected ECU. And it's not anything like the magneto we just discussed. As a matter of fact, this is where most people get confused when setting up the ignition on these EFI kits. So off camera I fabricated this bracket to hold the sensor. Now we can mount this sensor in the space previously occupied by the magneto. All right, well, let's power up the sensor and see how it works. Now, these Hall Effect sensors normally operate at 24 volts DC, but they work fine anywhere between 5 and 30 volts. And right away, we have a problem. You see, the sensor should be on right now, but it ain't. So let's try to figure this out. Okay, it turns on here, but not here. And it looks like it turns on here as well. Well, this turns out to be a huge problem, and there's no easy solution. You see these Hall Effect proximity sensors can only detect the south pole on a magnet, and the magnet attached to this flywheel has the north side facing out. As it stands right now, we're getting two triggers, one right next to the other, and that will not work with this ECU. It'll actually confuse the ECU and the engine absolutely will not run. Although it's not really clear in the video, we are getting two trigger signals, one right after the other, and that's due to a field leak around the magnet. The ECU is expecting only one signal per revolution and not two. The reason we're getting two signals is, the south side of the magnet field has permeated the cast iron flywheel on either side of the north facing magnet. These two south fields are what's triggering the Hall effect sensor, so the problem's actually twofold. First, well, we have a problem with the trigger, and second, it's the way I edited the video. So here's an updated video that shows the double trigger more clearly. And yeah, that's a huge problem. You see on the oscilloscope, we would get a signal like this, and that's not cool. The ECU is expecting a signal like this. Now there is no easy way to fix this, unless you purchase the specialized north sensing crank trigger, and that's a reasonable solution. Now I could custom build a Hall effect sensor that detects the north magnetic field. I mean, the parts are cheap enough, but that's not an off the shelf solution. And I think that path is not in line with the nuts and bolts kind of build we're doing. The electronic fuel injection is complicated enough, and custom building sensors puts up a barrier. When I say barrier, I mean the level of technology which the majority of the audience can understand and tolerate. I don't want to go too far out in left field just to solve a problem. Hope that makes sense. Anyway, I reckon modifying the code is possible, but at this point I don't have the source code, and once again I don't want to go down that road because it's another barrier. Changing the magnet is something I wouldn't encourage for a number of reasons. First, the flywheel would likely need to be rebalanced, and that would be more expensive than buying the correct sensor. Second, the forces on the magnet are not trivial, and there's a good chance a replacement magnet would fail, and that may cause a lot of damage, and it would be very dangerous. So that's out. So other than buying the North Sensing Crank Trigger for 55 bucks, the only other option was to abandon the flywheel trigger and fabricate an alternative method. And now for some interesting stuff. Now some of you folks have chimed in and said that the neodymium magnets that I'm using are going to lose their power if they're subjected to too much heat. And that's great feedback. Thank you very much for posting that. I'm going to go ahead and try to get a temperature of the magnet once the engine's up and running. And if it gets too hot, then we'll have to seek another solution.
Anyway, that's pretty much it for now. Thanks for watching, and until next time.